Spinning rust is a name you may have heard associated to hard disks and often it's associated with the drives just being an aging technology but actually this originates from the coating used on disks long ago which was iron oxide as the magnetic coating to store data and this is obviously more commonly known as rust. In more recent years iron was replaced by cobalt as a ferromagnetic material and cobalt platinum alloys have been the go-to for PMR and CMR disks for some time but as hard disks get to higher densities, this alloy isn't magnetically stable enough to store data in very small magnetic grains on the disk surface and this has been a barrier to increased aerial density. Now, the concern here is bit rot, and that is if the domain is too small, energetic particles such as those from solar storms can change the polarity and cause data to get damaged. Now, enter heat assisted magnetic recorder, and this is shortened to HAMAR, or hammer, and this is the new kit on the block for increased hard disk density, and it's enabled by moving to a more magnetically stable alloy known as an iron platinum alloy super lattice, which has much higher cursivity, and this means it's hard to change its magnetic state unless you raise it above its Curie temperature, and this is where it becomes easier to polarize. Now, this is why hammer uses lasers to preheat the platters prior to writing, and this results in higher aerial density better magnetic stability, and less likelihood of bit rot. Now, this is just a brief overview, but I will link a video I made around 18 months ago that goes into all of the engineering and physics behind Hammer. Go check it out if that kind of thing interests you to understand how it actually works. It's actually, um, I think, pretty fascinating. Today's focus is on actual real-world testing. I'm gonna fully test one of these drives to find out how they actually perform, how the power consumption looks, how noisy they are, and also, given it's firing its freaking lasers, do they run any hotter? The results are actually pretty interesting and I compare a 30 terabyte Exos hammer drive against a regular CMR 18 terabyte and 24 terabyte Exos to see how they compare. Those drives all have affiliate links below so you can go check out current pricing and see how they compare for price per terabyte at whatever time you find yourself watching this video. So let's go. Now let's start with the specs so we can see how the Exos M hammer drive looks on the data sheet compared to the Exos X range. The drives I'm comparing today are the Exos X18 18TB drive, and that's model ST18000NM 000J, the Exos X24 24TB model, and this is model number ST24000NM 002H, and the Exos M drive, short for Mosaic, and that's a 30TB hammer drive, model ST30000NM 004K. All of these drives spin at 7200 RPM, they come with a five year warranty, they have the same stated MTBF, which is the mean time between failures of two and a half million hours, and that means an annualized failure rate of 0.35%. For the differences, the 18 terabyte drive comes with 256 megabytes of cache, where the X24 and the Exos M come with 512 megabytes of cache. The 18 terabyte has nine platters with a density of two terabytes per platter and a claimed max throughput of 270 megabytes per second. The 24 terabyte drive has 10 platters, so that's a density of 2.4 terabytes per platter with a claim throughput of 275 megabytes per second. And then the hammer drive also has 10 platters, but it has a density of 3 terabytes per platter and its claim throughput is 285 megabytes per second. Given that read and write performance on these drives is driven by a few factors, one of the key ones being aerial density, that is how tightly packed the data is on the drive, it might be logical to expect the hammer drive to be faster, but the spec sheet shows that this is marginal, so we're gonna test this and find out what's going on. Right, as usual, I'm gonna start with a large write test. As we comparing drives at different capacity, the first thing we're gonna see in these tests is that due to the increased capacity, the performance profile is stretched out for the larger drives. And this means that if two drives at different capacities have the same platter count and perform around the same point at all places in the platter, that the larger disk is gonna enjoy higher performance at the same written capacity. So for example, by 18 terabytes, the X18 is already at the end of its performance curve and achieving around 150 megabytes per second, whereas the X24 is still only 75% of the way to its capacity and it's delivering nearly 200. So if you want to write 10 terabytes of data, it's gonna be faster on a 20 terabyte drive than on a 10 terabyte drive in most cases. The capacity is along the bottom axis here and we see that each drive test completes obviously at its own capacity, 18, 24 and 30 terabytes respectively. From a comparative performance perspective, the X18 and the Hammer Drive actually have a similar performance profile with a 30 terabyte enjoying that stretch curve, 
The 24 terabyte starts stronger and it performs above the other two drives. And this is most likely related to its aerial density, meaning as the head flies over the platter, it's passing over denser and more numerous magnetic domains so it can go and put data onto and off the disk more quickly. And if we look at the time to complete, we see that the 30 terabyte hammer drive took nearly 40 hours to complete the test with the X24 30.6 and the X18 at just under one day. This is how long it would take to fill each of these drives if you just copied large sequential file writes onto it. As the capacity of the drive increases, the actual throughput of the heads to write data onto the, uh, onto the surface becomes the main constraint for performance. Now from a performance standpoint, the X24 is the faster drive, averaging at 216 megabytes per second to the X18's 208.3, and the hammer drive actually being slowest of all, if only by a megabyte per second, but it's pretty interesting given the superior density. So moving on to the large read test, again, similar profiles in the graph, and this suggests the performance of the Exos M we saw just now in the write test is not just related to the different process that's now used to write the data on these drives. Read speeds are faster, as usual, with the X18 starting out at 274 megabytes per second and the X24 at 276, and then the Exos M at 278. But from here, the X24 again starts to gain ground, and the Exos M also improves to start with, and then they all provide consistent performance as the drives fill to the middle of the platters. But the main takeaway is that performance here is proportional to the right performance, and the hammer drive does not appear to take any penalty for the heat assisted recording process. Why the 24 terabyte seems faster for both of these tests is not clear to me, as they both have 10 platters and the hammer has a greater density. It suggests that whatever it is affects read and write in a similar way. The time to complete graph shows that it would take the hammer drive 38 hours to read all of its contents compared to 29.1 on the X24 and 22.9 on the X18, with an average megabytes per second again, similar in profile to the large writes with 226.9 average Mbps on the X24. The M, 30 terabyte, a little ahead of the X18 on 217.3 average megabytes per second, and the X18 coming in at 216.6. Overall, the X24 is 4.3% faster on the write test and 4.4% faster on the read test. So again, nothing that suggests the write process is specifically slow with Hammer. The X18 does come in 0.6% faster on average on the write and 0.3% slower on the read. Now comparing the max sustain throughput to what the data sheet says, we see that the hammer drive gets 284.3x versus the claim 285. The X24 comes in at 290.6 against its claim 275, and the X18 scores 274.8 against its claimed 270. So all the drives are in line, but a little bit ahead of their claim numbers from the data sheet. Now to the mixed write test, and this does seem to be a test that the 30 terabyte hammer drive doesn't do so well at. For this test, the X18 has a strong start at 217 megabytes per second and actually performs better across the entire test, finishing at 116. The two others start at 188 for the X24 and 181 for the Exos M, and they have flatter performance curves. And if we look at the time to fill each of these disks, the Hammer Drive writes its 16.3 million files in this test in 54 and a half hours. The X24 writes its 13 million files in 40 hours and 20 minutes, and the X18 writes its 9.8 million files in just over 28 hours. Average speed has the X18 winning at 175 megabytes per second, and then the hammer drives coming in last at only 151.7. Different drives handle different operations in different ways based on their firmware, so this slower performance may not be directly related to the technology in place. For example, the Toshiba drives often have slower mixed write performance, and it could just be related to how the cache is utilized and how the file metadata is managed on the disk. Now the mixed file read chart looks much more like the large file read chart with performance between the drives much closer. The X25 appears to perform better again and its megabytes per second at the inner tracks remains higher than the other disks. Time to complete is again about 40 hours for the X or 30.7 hours on the X24 and just over 24 hours for the X18. Now the Exos M averages 206.6 megabytes per second in this test, and then the X24 produces 214.9, so it's 4% faster than the hammer drive, with the X18 averaging 204.5, so just 1% less than the hammer drive. And then the mixed rewrite test, where 20% of non-sequential files are rewritten across the entire disk. And this looks visually similar to the mixed write test, but the X18 drive is the worst performer. The X24 seems to do best, but the hammer drive produces very consistent results at least. 
The test produces an average of 143 megabytes per second on the X24. The Hammer Drive, 6% slower at 134.6, and then the X18, 3.5% slower again than the Exos M at 129.8. And finally, results of all the tests blended together, where the X24 wins out. It's 5.5% faster on average than the Exos M, and the X18 also 3.6% faster. So overall, the Exos Mosaic Hammer Drive is a slower drive, but only by a few percentage points. And this is despite it having the highest aerial density of these discs. Okay, let's look at the power consumption because there is significant difference with this hard disk to others in so much as it's heating the platters as it writes to around 400 degrees centigrade with lasers. And as we see at the baseline, the X18 is lower, but the X24 and Xos M have the same baseline power usage here. Once we actually run the test, we see that for all write operations, the hammer drive is around 5% more thirsty on power. However, given what is happening, 5% is not very much, and it does support the claim that the hammer write process only consumes a small portion of the power compared to the regular consumption driven by things like the spindle motor and actuating the heads with the voice calls to write data, etc. In the read tests, the Exos M actually uses a little less power than the X24 by around 4%. And looking at the acoustics, we see that the hammer drive is also louder than the others by a fair way, with the X24 coming in second on mixed file operations. And the X18 is noisy in the X24 when it comes to working with large files. Okay, so, so far it seems that despite the addition of the platter heating and the performance is not wildly different, but a little lower. But the drive does consume a little more power. Let's see what this does for drive heat, because this is actually the thing I was quite of interested in. So first of all, the reported disk temperature is done by Smart during the large file read test. And here we see it's a little higher, but it is very marginal and maybe not by more than one degree centigrade. Bear in mind that the large write test would be the most impacted as it creates long sequential writes where the drive is laying down data the fastest it can onto the platter. The large read temps again show that if anything, the drive runs a tiny bit cooler. I would expect that the drive is heating the platters rarely or at all during read operations as the heat assisted process is only required for writing data. Mixed writes show similar results to the large reads. Again, it's really no more than around a degree of extra temperature. And the mixed read chart also doesn't show any real differences in temperature, which I think given what we saw already isn't a big surprise. So the laser powered hammer drive really only runs at most one degree hotter during write, even when tested non-stop for 50 hours straight. And it runs at similar or maybe one degree lower temperatures during reads. So let's move on to the conclusions here, but first do please hit that like if you learned something or this was useful or interesting. And please also share this with anyone else who might find it interesting. And of course, consider a sub if you wanna see more of my content. The links below are Amazon affiliate links, if you do purchase a drive, then the channel gets a small commission, which costs you nothing, but it does help fund the testing I do, and I always appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. So what do I think of the hammer drives? Well, the first thing I found quite interesting is that the power consumption isn't much higher, and the drives do not appear to be any more than one degree warmer, so the heat management looks to be a non-issue. If you watch my video on the technology in hammer, you will see that the heating is incredibly brief, and though the platter has to be heated to around 400 degrees centigrade, this is done for such short durations and in such tiny areas that the actual power and heat really isn't significant. The platters are also designed to dissipate this heat well. Performance overall is really solid, though interestingly it is a little bit lower than the X24, which is the closest drive physically with 10 platters, and that has a density of 2.4 terabytes per platter to the Hammer Drive's 3 terabyte platters. I would have expected that the increased aerial density increased the throughput, but it seems not to be the case. And it doesn't look like it's related to the writing process specifically, as the performance compared to the X24 is consistent for both those reads and write operations. Price-wise, it will vary, but the cost per terabyte is actually currently around the same as other high-end drives. So there doesn't seem to be a premium to be paid, and this bodes well for pricing going forward as these drives increase in capacity. There is talk of a 50 terabyte version in the next couple of years. Now, reliability wise, it's a little early to know, but it comes with the same warranty and MTBF figures as the other Exos drives. The drives have been now provided to hyperscalers for at least a couple of years, so they've been deployed at scale. And Seagate does say that actually they've exceeded reliability expectations. Now, I can't really thoroughly test reliability 
as this would require large numbers of drives and years of testing. But I have put 1.3 petabytes of data through this disk during testing and it hasn't skipped a beat. That's already over two years of the stated max annual workload of 550 terabytes per year. So the drive does take a very long time to fill up, however, even an average speed of around 200 megabytes per second. And I can only imagine the rebuild time for a failed disk on an array of 10 of these, but I don't fall into the camp of drives being too large for RAID arrays. You always need to have backups and you should plan for failures during a RAID rebuild if you're using two terabyte drives or if you're using 30 terabyte drives. Now, the slot density in a NAS or server with this drive is also pretty insane. So I love the tech. The drive seems to work flawlessly and I hope we start to see some reliability data soon. I've made some videos previously analyzing reliability data from Backblaze, but there's no sign yet that they're deploying these drives. But having really large scale reliability data for me would be the holy grail here. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Go check that deep dive as well, by the way, on these drives. I think it's interesting and the video should be showing on your screen now. And I look forward to seeing you in the next.